Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will implement a 3-bit asynchronous up-down counter using JK Flip-Flop in Tinkercad. So, let's begin. Before that, subscribe to my YouTube channel if not already done and press the bell icon to receive the latest updates so that you do not miss any of my videos. Please like and share my videos. Thank you. So, let's begin. Counters remember the digital combinations of data and are used everywhere and every time in our day-to-day -day life. The best example of a counter is the digital clock alarm that wakes you up in the early morning. There are two types of counters, synchronous counters and asynchronous counters. Asynchronous counters, also called as ripple counter, are easy to design and require less number of logic gates. Asynchronous counters, as the name applies, uses non-synchronous clock signals for the flip-flops to operate. Meaning, each flip-flop has separate clock signal. The number of flip-flops used in a ripple counter depends up on the number of states of counter. The number of output states of counter is called modulus or mod of the counter. The maximum number of states that a counter can have is 2 raised to n, where n represents the number of flip-flops used in counter. Thus, if you have two flip-flops, the maximum number of outputs of the counter is 4 and it is called as mod 4 counter or modulus 4 counter. Here, we are going to design a 3-bit asynchronous up-down counter using JK flip-flop. Hence, we will require three JK flip-flops. The circuit diagram of a 3-bit asynchronous up-down counter using JK flip-flop is shown below. Since this is an asynchronous up-down counter, we will need a mode selection switch to switch between up counter or down counter. Logic, 1 on the mode selection switch will indicate up counting whereas, logic, 0, on the mode selection switch will indicate down counting. The clock signal for the next JK flip-flop will be dependent on the mode selection switch and outputs Q and Q bar for the previous JK flip-flop. The circuit for clock signal preceding flip-flops is as shown here. Let's implement the circuit by creating a new project on Tinkercad. Components required are, 4 resistors of 220 ohms each, 4 LEDs for indication, DIPX4 switch, breadboard, power supply, function generator for generating a clock signal, and gate IC7408, or gate IC7432, hex inverter IC7404, and 2 dual JK flip-flop IC74HC73. Let us connect the power supply to power lines on the breadboard. Let us place all the ICs carefully in the center of the breadboard. You can watch our video on how to use breadboards by clicking the i link on the screen. Let us connect the power supply to power lines on the breadboard.
connect the reset 1 and reset 2 pins of the IC7473 to VCC. Next, connect all the J and K inputs of the IC7473 to VCC. Let us now use LED for indicating the output states of the up-down counter. Connect LEDs to the output pins of the IC7473. Be careful, we have to use the output pins and not the inverted output pins of the JK flip-flops for indication. Let's use the DIPX4 switch for mode selection, M. We will now connect the output of the DIPX4 switch to the hex inverter IC to generate the logic zero signal, M bar, for the down counting mode selection. Now that our basic circuit is ready, let's connect the clock signals for all JK flip-flops. The first JK flip-flop will receive its clock signal from an external clock pulse generator such as a function generator. The output Q0 is connected to output 2 of the second IC7473. Hence, the external clock pulse generated from the function generator is connected to clock 2 of the second IC7473. The second output Q1 is connected to output 1 of the second IC7473. Hence the clock signal clock 1, is dependent on mode selection and previous outputs Q0 and Q0 bar. To implement the circuit for generating clock signal clock 1, simply follow the following steps. Step 1, take the end operation of output Q0 and mode selection switch, M.
Step 2. Take the and operation of the output Q0 bar and inverted mode selection switch, um bar. Step 3, take the OR of the two outputs generated in the previous steps and connect it to the clock pulse clock 1. The third output Q2 is connected to output 2 of the first IC7473. Hence, the clock signal clock 2 is dependent on mode selection and previous outputs Q1 and Q2 bar. To implement the circuit for generating clock signal clock 2, simply follow the following steps. Step 1. Take the end operation of the output Q1 and mode selection switch, M. Step 2. Take the end operation of the output Q1 bar and inverted mode selection switch, M bar. Step 3. Take the OR of the outputs generated in the previous steps and connect it to the clock pulse clock 2. Let us use the blue LED for indicating mode selection status. Now that our circuit is ready, let's simulate and verify the operation of the asynchronous up-down counter. When the mode selection switch generates logic 0, the counter circuits start down counting. When the mode selection switch generates logic 1, the counter circuit starts up counting.
I hope you like this video. Thank you for your love and support. See you soon.